so in the great city of Brindavan, in far off India, there's a temple that was built in honor of the god Krishna. And in that temple stands a full-size statue of the Lord Krishna with a precious, priceless diamond embedded in his forehead. Now because there was fear that robbers could come to steal this precious gem, a night watchman was hired who happened to be a devotee of Lord Krishna. And every night the watchman would come, lock the door of the temple and sit in lotus position in front of the statue and he would sing devotional bhajans to keep himself awake and also in great great love of this Lord. Now the voice of the watchman was such that because he was tone deaf, the sound that emanated was somewhat coarse, off key, but he belted out his bhajans with great gusto and great, great devotion. But one night, the temple priest who, as it so happened, was a well-known and accomplished musician, happened to be passing the temple at night when he heard what he could only judge as this caterwauling. So he opened the temple and went in to see the night watchman sitting there singing with all his might. Temple priest was so angry, grabbed the watchman, stood him up and said, what is this dreadful sound? Don't you know this is a time when the Lord Krishna is sleeping? How can he sleep when you're making that dreadful, dreadful noise? The tears began to flow out of the watchman's eyes. The temple priest in his anger said to the watchman, now get out, get out and don't come back again. The watchman staggered out of the temple, weeping, weeping. But the temple priest left and as his anger and effrontery abated, he realized that there was no one to guard the temple. So he <coughs> himself had to remain to stand guard. So seating himself down, closing his eyes, suddenly in the silence he heard footsteps not just footsteps, but the sound of heavy pacing. And he thought to himself, how could robbers get in? I locked the door. But when he opened his eyes, there was the statue of the Lord Krishna in all his glory, pacing up and down well, at first, the priest was overwhelmed and thought that because of his good works and his own devotion, that the Lord Krishna had come alive and was there in front of him. But the Lord Krishna was bewailing. Where is my devotee? I am not able to sleep because every night he lulls me with his devotional chanting. 
the priest said, well, 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 um, I'm, I'm a, uh, an accomplished musician. I will sing the bhajans for you. So going into the next room, he took his tambour and he came out and tuned it. And then he began to sing the bhajans that he'd heard the watchman singing. But after a while, Krishna said, no, 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 no. I've heard bhajans for eons and eons. And I can sing better than any of those. I want my watchman to put me to sleep. And so what could the priest do? He had to get up and take himself to the watchman's house where he found him weeping copiously the loss of being in the presence of his great Lord, being able to sing the songs of love and devotion. And he said this to the priest. The priest said bitterly, well, you're in luck because the Lord Krishna wants you to come and sing for him. So the priest and the watchman went back to the temple. And the Lord Krishna waiting there said, well, sing for me. I've been waiting for you. And through his sobbing, the watchman began to sing again. This time the sound was even more harsh than before because his voice was racked with the tears of his sobbing off-key, strident, eternal. But as the temple priest listened, something piercing entered his being. Suddenly, he realized that he'd only been listening to the surface of the sounds. He had never trammeled the depth of sound. And along with the Lord Krishna, the temple priest, went into a state of bliss such as he'd never experienced before. Suddenly, the sounds of the singing of the bhajans of the watchmen ceased. Lord Krishna, standing on his pedestal, peaceful and blissful. The temple priest, having entered a state beyond any that had been experienced when living on the surface, of sound and listening. But when the temple priest shook the body of the night watchman to rouse him since the dawn had risen and there was no longer need for his duties the soul of the watchman had flown and his body fell lifeless in front of the great statue of the god Krishna. What is it? 
What is it that we've discovered? What is it that we've tapped? What is it that rises through whatever is spoken? Whatever it is that emanates from our being. First, we began not belonging, wondering why are we here? And this changes to a sense of seeking. First, seeking to belong, and then a recognition that we can never belong. And then perhaps arising a longing, a deep, deep longing, giving rise to a quest, a seeking. And now, and now, having pierced, all the sounds of life to tap the depth silence or sound beyond the sound what is it what is it that comes forth with every breath we take, every utterance, every thought, every deed. What is it that in this story is called devotion. What is it for you? What name? What name will you call it when someone dares to ask? when it pierces the being to whom it's directed. And they ask, what will you say? What is it? <laughs>